हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माई चैनल एक्सेंट्रिक लर्निंग आई होप यू हैव गन सो दर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ सर्कल्स वेर वी हैव सीन वॉट आर कॉर्ड्स एंड आर्क ऑफ ए सर्कल सम इम्पॉर्टेंट थियोरम्स ऑन कॉर्ड्स इंस्क्राइब्ड एंगल थियोरम एंड सो ऑन इन केस इफ यू हैवन गन थ्रू दैट वीडियो टिल नाउ द लिंक हैज बिन गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स प्लीज गो थ्रू इट ऑल्सो इफ यू लाइक माई वीडियोज दैन डू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल एंड ऑल्सो शेयर विथ योर फ्रेंड्स In this video, we are going to see what are tangents and secants, and some important theorems on tangents and secants. We will be also seeing what is an alternate segment theorem, number of common tangents of two circles, how we can find the length of direct common tangent and transverse common tangent, and what is a cyclic quadrilateral and its properties. So let us start with today's video. let us start with what is a tangent and secant any line drawn to a circle which touches the circle at only one point is called a tangent to the circle and any line which intersect the circle at two points is called a secant to the circle say from a point p i have drawn a line pt such that this line touches the circle at only this point so the line pt can be termed as a tangent to the circle and the point at which the tangent touches the circle is called as the point of tangency in a similar way if we draw a line from a point p to the circle such that it crosses the circle at this two points say a and b then this line pab is termed as a secant to this circle so a tangent is a line which touches the circle at only one point and a secant is a line which intersects the circle at two points now let us see some theorems on tangents here i have drawn a circle with center o p is an external point from where i have drawn two tangents pa and pb at the point of contact a and b oa and ob are the radius of the circle theorem on tangent states that the tangent drawn to a circle is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact so if pa is a tangent to the circle and oa is the radius then this angle is 90 degree in a similar way since pb is a tangent to the circle and ob is the radius so this angle will also be 90 degree so oa is perpendicular to ap and ob is perpendicular to bp also the two tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal in length so if p is an external point and pa and pb are the two tangents drawn on this circle in that case the length of pa would be equal to the length of pb so the tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact and the two tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal also in this case if we assume the length of ap to be t the length of op to be d and the radius oa to be r in that case triangle oap would be a right angle triangle and we can use pythagoras theorem from which we can say d square would be equal to t square plus r square we can use this relation directly whenever we have been given two of the three lengths and we need to find the third length now let us see some theorem on secants say ab and cd are two secants and they intersect at a point p outside the circle as shown in this figure in that case the product of the length pa and pb is same as the product of the length pc and pd now if we keep on pushing this secant 
outside in that case the points c and d will come close to each other and at one point the points c and d will coincide and in that case this secant will no longer be a secant to this circle rather it would be a tangent to the circle something like this where this point would be the point of tangency where the points c and d will coincide let us denote this point by t that is t is the point where the points c and d coincide so the length of pc and pd would be same and this length would be equal to pt so from this relation we can write pa into pb would be same as pt into pt that is pt square so in a circle when we have a secant and a tangent we can directly use this relation in a similar way if the two secants ab and cd intersect each other at a point p inside the circle as shown in this figure then also we can write the similar relation that is the product of the length pa and pb would be same as the product of the length pc into pd well these are very important theorems and relations which would be very handy whenever we would be solving problems on circles based on tangents and secants so that's why i would suggest you all to understand and to remember these relations now let us see what is an alternate segment theorem alternate segment theorem states that the angle between a tangent and a chord through the point of contact of the tangent is equal to the angle made by the chord in the alternate segment to understand this better here i have drawn a circle with center o at is a tangent to the circle at the point of contact a ab is a chord to the circle the arc ab subtends some angle at the circumference at point c alternate segment theorem states that the angle formed between this chord and the tangent is equal to the angle formed by this chord at the alternate segment that is this angle so if this angle is theta then this angle is also theta now instead of subtending an angle at c this chord ab can subtend some angle at c dash in this case also this angle will be theta and so on so this is what alternate segment theorem is that is the angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle made by the chord in the alternate segment well alternate segment theorem is a very important theorem so that's why i would suggest you all to understand this theorem properly so that you can use it whenever required now let us see the number of common tangents between any two circles in general for any two circles there can be anywhere from 0 to 4 common tangents depending on the position of one circle with respect to the other now let us see different cases where we would be getting different number of common tangents between any two circles let us see the first case when one circle is contained within another circle in such cases there can be no common tangent which can be drawn to this two circles so in such cases there would be zero common tangents also here these two circles don't have the same center this bigger circle will have the center somewhere here and this smaller circle will have the center somewhere here but if any two circles have the same center then the circles are said to be concentric circles so if one circle is contained within another circle then there would be no common tangents between the two circles
Now let us see this case. So here also the smaller circle is being contained in the bigger circle and both of these circles touch each other internally at this point. We can draw one common tangent which would be passing through this point and would be tangent to both of these circles. So for such cases where the two circles touch each other internally at one point, there can be only one common tangent. Now let us consider the radius of the bigger circle to be R1 and the radius of the smaller circle to be R2 and the distance between the centers of these two circles to be D. In that case, the distance D can be written as R1 minus R2. So when two circles touch each other internally, in that case, the distance between the centers of the two circles is equal to the difference in the radii of the two circles. Now let us see the third case. Here the two circles are intersecting in this way as shown in this figure. In such cases, there can be two tangents which would be common to both of these circles. So for such kind of cases, there can be two common tangents. And both of these tangents are called as direct common tangent. Now let us consider the radius of these two circles to be R1 and R2 and the distance between the centers of these two circles to be D. From this figure, we can see that the distance between the centers of these two circles D would be lesser than the sum of the radii of these two circles. Also, when there are two intersecting circles as shown in this figure, then the line joining the centers of the two circles will perpendicularly bisect the line joining the points of intersection. That is, if this is the line joining the point of intersection of these two circles, then this line would be perpendicularly bisect by the line joining the centers of the two circles. So this length would be equal to this length and these angles would be 90 degree. So when there are two intersecting circles in this way, then there are two common tangents and the distance between the centers is lesser than the sum of the radii of the two circles. And when there are two intersecting circles, then the line joining the centers of the two circles will perpendicularly bisect the line joining the point of intersection. Now let us see the fourth case. Here I have drawn two circles which touch each other externally at this point as shown in this figure. In such cases, there are three common tangents, one, two, and three. These two tangents are called as direct common tangent and this tangent is called as transverse common tangent. Here again, if we consider the radius of these two circles to be R1 and R2, in that case, the distance between the centers of these two circles D can be written as R1 plus R2. So when the two circles touch each other externally as shown in this figure, then there are three common tangents. Two are direct common tangent. One is a transverse common tangent. And the distance between the centers of these two circles is equal to the sum of the radii of these two circles. Now let us see the fifth case. Here I have drawn two circles which are non-intersecting and non-enclosing. That is one circle doesn't lie inside the other. In such cases, four number of common tangents can be drawn. One, two, three and four. 
these two tangents are called as direct common tangent and these two tangents are called as transverse common tangent. Here again, if we consider the radius of these two circles to be R1 and R2 and the distance between the centers of these two circles to be D, in that case, we can see that the distance D is greater than the sum of the radii of the two circles. So when the two circles are non-intersecting and non-enclosing, in that case, there are four common tangents. Two are direct common tangent and two are transverse common tangent. And the distance between the centers of these two circles would be greater than the sum of the radii of the two circles. So there can be anywhere from zero to four common tangents between two circles depending on the position of one circle with respect to the other. In the first case, when one circle lies completely inside the other, in that case, there is no common tangent. In the second case, when the two circles touch each other internally, then there is only one common tangent and the distance between the centers of these two circles is equal to the difference in the radii of the two circles. In the third case, when the two circles intersect each other as shown in this figure, then there are two common tangent and the distance between the centers is lesser than the sum of the radii of the two circles. In the fourth case, when the two circles touch each other externally, then there are three common tangents, two are direct common tangent, one is a transverse common tangent and the distance between the center of this two circle is equal to the sum of the radii of the two circles. And in the fifth case, when the two circles are non-intersecting and non-enclosing, in that case, there are four common tangents. Two are direct common tangent and two are transverse common tangent. And the distance between the center of the two circle is greater than the sum of the radii of the two circles. Now let us see the length of direct common tangent and transverse common tangent. To find the length of direct common tangent, here I have drawn two circles with radii R1 and R2. This line represents the direct common tangent. Let us denote this length by T1. I have also joined the centers of these two circles. So this line gives the distance between the center of these two circle. Let us denote this length by D. To find the length of direct common tangent, I have constructed a line parallel to this line from this point on the radius of the bigger circle. So if the length of this line is D, then the length of this line will also be D. Since these two lines are parallel lines and the length of this line is R2. So this length will also be R2 and this length represents the radius of the bigger circle that is R1. So this length would be R1 minus R2. Now from the theorem on tangents, we know that any tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. So this angle would be 90 degree. Now, if we consider this triangle, then this triangle would be a right angle triangle, right angle at this point. So we can directly use Pythagoras theorem. That is hypotenuse square would be equal to perpendicular square plus B square. And in this triangle, the length of the hypotenuse is D. So we can write D square equal to perpendicular square, which would be R1 minus R2 square plus B square, which would be T1 square. So from this T1 can be written as under root of D square minus R1 minus R2 whole square. So the length of direct common tangent can be found out simply by using this formula, which is under root of D square minus R1 minus R2 whole square, where D 
is the distance between the center of the two circles and R1 and R2 represents the radius of the two circles. In a similar way, we can find the length of the transverse common tangent by constructing a line parallel to the transverse common tangent from the center of the bigger circle whose radius is R1. So this length will also represent the length of the transverse common tangent. Let us denote this length by T2. Since this transverse common tangent is a tangent to this smaller circle and this is the radius, so this angle would be 90 degree. So we can say that this angle will also be 90 degree as these two lines are parallel lines. I have also extended this line till this point. Since this length is R1, so this length will also be R1. So the total length of this line would be R1 plus R2. Here also, let us denote the distance between the centers of these two circles by D. Now, if we look at this triangle, this is a right angle triangle, right angle at this point. So here also we can use Pythagoras theorem. Here the length D represents the hypotenuse. So this can be written as hypotenuse square that is D square equal to perpendicular square that is T2 square plus B square that is R1 plus R2 whole square. From this, we can write T2, that is the length of the transverse common tangent to be under root of D square minus R1 plus R2 whole square. So the length of the transverse common tangent is under root of D square minus R1 plus R2 whole square, where D is the distance between the center of the two circle and R1 and R2 represents the radius of the two circles. Well, here I have shown you all the derivation to find the length of direct common tangent and transverse common tangent for your better understanding. But if you guys are finding it a bit complex, you can ignore this derivation and can simply remember the formula to find the length of direct common tangent and transverse common tangent. The formula to find the length of direct common tangent is given by under root of d square minus r1 minus r2 whole square and the formula to find the length of transverse common tangent is given by this formula, which is under root of d square minus r1 plus r2 whole square. Where d is the distance between the centers of the two circles and r1 and r2 are the radii of the two circles. Now let us see what is a cyclic quadrilateral. If the four vertices of a quadrilateral lie on the circumference of a circle, then the quadrilateral is said to be a cyclic quadrilateral. Here, A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral and all the vertices of this quadrilateral lie on the circumference of this circle. So this quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now, there are some properties of a cyclic quadrilateral which we need to remember. The first is opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral is supplementary. That is, if ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral and if AC and BD are two pairs of opposite angles, then angle A plus angle C would be 180 degree and angle B plus angle D will also be 180 degree. The second is the exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. That is if ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral, then this exterior angle would be equal to the interior opposite angle. That is this angle would be equal to angle A. We can also see it in this way. This interior angle C and this exterior angle C would be a straight angle that is 180 degree. And from the first property, we know that opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral is supplementary. So this angle 
plus this angle is 180 degree. So we can say that this angle would be equal to this angle. That is the exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. We can also find the area of a cyclic quadrilateral when we know the length of all the four sides of the cyclic quadrilateral, which is given by under root of S minus A times S minus B times S minus C times S minus D, where small a, small b, small c and small d are the length of the four sides of the cyclic quadrilateral and S is the semi-perimeter. That is A plus B plus C plus D upon 2. So, if the four vertices of a quadrilateral lie on the circumference of a circle, then the quadrilateral is said to be a cyclic quadrilateral. And the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral is supplementary. The exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. And the area of a cyclic quadrilateral with sides A, B, C and D is given by under root of S minus A times S minus B times S minus C times S minus D, where S is the semi-perimeter that is A plus B plus C plus D upon 2. So that's it for today's video in which we have seen what a tangents and secants along with some important theorems, number of common tangents of two circles, how we can find the length of direct common tangent and transverse common tangent, what is a cyclic quadrilateral and so on. And in the next video, we would be solving some problems based on the concepts that we have seen in part one and part two of the circles video. I hope you have learned something in today's video, but if you have any confusion, you can watch the video again. And still, if you have any doubts, you can put it in the comment box. I will try to answer each one of your queries. So if you like my videos, then do subscribe my channel and also share with your friends. I will see you all in my next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and keep growing. Thank you.